Hey guys, welcome back to Zenworks channel. Today we are back with another HLMS episode again. The protagonist of today's episode will be Leo from Gundam Wing series. Before we start this video, make sure you subscribe to me and hit the bell next to it. Remember to turn on your CC sub. Enjoy! In the Togi's episode, we already know that OZ simplified the Togi's and redesigned into two different MS. Because the Togi's deadly acceleration and expensive production cost, OZ simplified the design and created the Leo series. First, OZ removed the Super Vanier backpack and some of the armor. This action allowed normal pilots to control the Leo easily, even though the mobility and defense were severely decreased. But the cost is in control and the maneuverability is substantially improved. The overall structure was simplified and the height was shortened. The heat radiators on the chest were simplified. All the defensive armor was reduced and only the chest got extra protection. The skirt was redesigned and replaced with two thrusters for simple repositioning. The head was simplified and cannot equip the extra mask like the Torgis. The Leo itself was just like the Ares. It was equipped with hard points on the shoulders, back and thighs. The hard points allow the Leo to carry different weapons or equipment to adapt the battlefield, making the Leo became versatile and quickly approved by different factions. In May AC-175, the Leo was officially mass produced and became the main forces. The first generation was deployed and is called Leo Early Type. This version don't have a lot of difference compared to the one we saw in the anime. The early type had a simplified head design, less armor on the knees and ankles, and no extra armor plates on the shoulders. The rest of the settings were exactly the same like the one we saw in the anime. The Leo and Leo early type armaments include a shield that contained two beam sabers and a 105mm rifle. As I said before, the Leo itself had a lot of hard points for different equipment and weapons. Alternatively, the pilot can choose the following weapons. Beam rifle Beam Rifle Normal Type for Firepower Beam Rifle Shorty Type for Rapid Fire Beam Rifle Colony Type for Universal Use in Space or on Earth It can be fitted with long or short barrel All three of the rifles were powered by removable energy pack Through an attachment piece, it can use the Dover Gun A strong recoil weapon with destructive power to damage the Gundams The Leo could equip two of them The Leo could also equip a Bazooka large beam cannon and beam cannon from the Taurus. To further upgrade the firepower of the Leo, OZ upgraded it to Leo cannon type. This upgrade added a pair of beam cannons on the shoulders. Other than that, there wasn't any improvements. This variant were only used by officers or team commanders. On the back of the Leo, there is a hard point for different type of backpacks. The Leo can equip three type of backpacks. The first one is the parachute pack. The second one is the flight unit. A pair of wing boosters can let the Leo fly in the atmosphere for a short period of time. There is another pair of boosters on the vice to help taking off or rapid accelerations. The third backpack is called space backpack. It's a cylindrical booster backpack equipped with rocket and vernier thrusters. Once the space backpack was equipped, it's called Leo Space Type. Most of the space type will be colored in purple or blue. However, because this variant was hastily built from the standard Leo, despite its called Space Type, but its performance was below average. When Romo Vela Foundation was testing the mobile door system, Leo became the first test subject of that system. I will explain the system properly when I'm doing an episode on the MD System MS in the future. In the test field, the Leo's back will have a lot of cables connect on it. The early MD system still need a cable to control the commands. But later in the story, the MD system was successfully developed and all you need to do is to enter the command before deploying the MS. The MD system experiment Leo was shown once in the anime. It was in a test field and all three of them were destroyed by Talesu Kukshuninada. Just like most of the MP type MS throughout the Gundam franchise, Leo had an early warning and control variant. It's called Ewok Leo or Reconnaissance Leo. This version appeared in the G-Unit manga. The purpose of this MS was collecting enemies' data and send it back to the fleet. It will always stay at the back of the battlefield. The Ewok Leo is painted with purple, equipped with a space pack, and its only weapon will be the 105mm rival. The most obvious change will be the camera eyes were changed from 1 to 3, and a large radium on the back just like most of the Ewok suits. One of them was damaged by Gundam Gemnus 01 and self-destructed before the pilot asked anything from the spy. In the Frozen Tear Drop novel, one of the variations called Leo Type 2 Chimera was mentioned. Very little known information about this variation. All I know was that the Leo Type 2 was deployed once before the anime timeline. It was made from the prototype Leos, used by Trace faction to fight against the Rebel faction in Mogadishu. In Trace's insistence, all the Leo Type 2s were painted in white. The armaments were assumed to be the same 
as the standard Leo. Using the Leo starter, the developers redesigned the concept to ground type support based MS. The Tragos was developed, just like the Leo is a mass production MS, but its job is a mid range artillery. In the old days, the Tragos was considered as one of the best support MS being created. A Sento Sashi design and self propelled hover cannon. It was very powerful back then. Unlike the Leo, the Tragos was purely designed for artillery purpose, which means all the melee abilities were removed. The Tragos can switch between two modes, MS and Hover mode. Hover mode is what makes the Trago shines and became a self-propelled Hover cannon. During Hover mode, the legs will be folded and became a Centaur appearance. The Centaur chassis was for the cannons on the shoulders to fire with better accuracy and stabilize the fire process. Once the legs unfolded, the Tragos will transform into MS, but its mobility, performance and speed will be dramatically decreased. Basically, the Tragos is useless during MS mode and I don't know why OZ even designed this form. Other than the cannons on the shoulders, the Tragos could use a beam rifle too. The Tragos will mostly serve as the defensive team of OZ's bases and supporting from mid-range. As the battlefield shifted to mobile doors and new machines kept being developed, the Tragos was more outdated than the Leo. During Operation Nova, Tragos was officially eliminated from the battlefield. Leo is not only used by the soldiers, it also had Ace Pilot's own customization to fit their fighting style. In the G-Unit manga, Felder Farku aka the Dark General of Destruction was shown to have his own custom Black Leo. There is no official information about it, all we got is one page in the manga. Other than the obvious armor changes and the color is black, I can't find anything else about Velder's Leo. One of the OZ Prize members, Roach Natno, also had his own custom Leo. It's a space type colored with red and gold. A small fun fact, the Velder's Leo design was from a winner in the Leo customization competition. The design was reused and put into the G-Unit manga. OZ Prize, a group of elites that are as powerful as Zex or Trace, had their own customized Leo. The Stardust Knights have three members, each one of them got their own Leo. Starting with the first leader of OZ Prize, Leo S piloted by Roach Natano. The Leo S was greatly inspired from the Togi's design. You can see the helmet is from the Togi's, the combat performance was tuned and comparable to the Torgis. The whole machine was designed based on one idea, Nobo, which was why you see the gold decorations all over the body as well as the cloak. The cloak is called Diffuser Cloak. It's not sure whether this is just a decoration or not. Offensively, the Leo S got a pair of Beam Jewel Saber and Beam Musket as its primary range weapons. The Leo S performance wasn't good at all, even though it's a heavily customized unit, but its power was not even close compared to both Gundam Geminus. First, the Geminus 01 melted away the Leo S Beam Musket. Then, the Geminus 02 came and chopped off its right arm before Odell Barnett sacrificed himself to save his brother. Later in the story, as Felder Varku usurped Oza Prize, Crash Sylvie betrayed the Stardust Knights and severely damaged the Leo S. Roche was later picked up by MO5 and being treated. After he knows the truth, he defected to MO5. The second Leo in the Stardust Knights is called Leo R. This design removed a lot of armor and the overall weight became lighter, which means the mobility and agility was greatly increased. The Leo R don't have the best weapons, but its speed is enough to make the enemy confused and slice them in pieces quickly. On the back, you will see a lot of hair-like projectiles called Active Jammer Reed. For the armaments, two shoulder shields and beam jewel lancer. Other than the feminine and slender look, Honestly, there wasn't any other information. The Leo R deployed for a total of 3 times. The first battle was against the Geminus 02. The Leo R's Lancer was destroyed by the Geminus 02. However, later in the battle, the Leo R used the supercharged beam cannon and destroyed the Geminus 02 using space mines. In the end, OD was captured by OZ Prize. When Velder usurped OZ Prize, Crash betrayed the Stardust Knights and severely damaged the Leo S to show his loyalty towards Velder. Lastly, when Hydra Gundam and Leo R was about to end Gundam. East Culapius, Gundam Grip came out from the asteroid and chopped off Leo R's both arms. Before the Leo R was retired, it was heavily damaged by Gundam LO Booster. That's the last time we see the Leo R. The third Leo of the Stardust Knights is called Leo N. This design enhanced the battle performance, power, and defense. The first obvious change is the armor. It became bigger and thicker. The defensive abilities were greatly increased. 
the armor is good enough to defend against the shots from a 105mm machine gun. However, the mobility and effectiveness are very poor. It's basically a bulky and slow target. The Leo N got the worst performance in the team of three. The Leo N armaments include two beam sabers, machine cannons on the shoulders, a head axe, and the enlarged shoulder shields. The Leo N deployed for three times. During the first mission, the Leo N was chasing a shuttle before it was stopped by a Leo piloted by OD. Soon, the Leo N's right arm was chopped off by Germanus 01 and it was retreated. The second battle was against both Germanus Gundams. Other than it threw the Germanus 01 to the space mines, it didn't do anything. The Leo N is the only Stardust Knights member that was completely wrecked. It was destroyed by Hydra Gundam when Velda became the leader of OZ Prime. When OD Bernard returned from OZ Prize, he brought some of the MD system data back to MO5. Using the MD system data and leftover parts from the Leos, the D units were quickly mass produced. The D units will be used as a defensive mobile door along with the Leo team. This machine was completely controlled by MD system. In order to cut the cost and for easier production, the limbs were removed and replaced by two large thrusters and two beam cannons. Although the D units were not as powerful as a standard Leo, but because it could be mass produced in a large number, it still played a big role for the MO5 defense battle. A direct upgrade from the Leo Type 2, the Leo 3 Chimera was created. There is so little information about the Leo 3, other than the battle performance was enhanced, I can't find any information about the upgrade details and armaments. The only deploy record I can find is that some Leo 3 successfully defeated the UESA army. The final form of the Leo, introducing the Leo Type 4 Grief. I don't even know the this count as Leo or Torgis. Adding all the technologies and flight ability, this was the new concept of the Leo Type 4. First, the developers changed all the armor and weapons back to the Torgis standards. Other than Dobagan shield and two beam sabers, the Leo Type 4 can choose ballistic or beam rival, and the same cannons from the Tragos as optional weapons. The developers brought back the jet engines on the Ares and added them on the backpack and back skirts, making the Leo Type 4 having the similar mobility and acceleration like Torgis. For the appearance, the colors were painted like Torgis and the SWATS version. The crown was brought back too. Since the Leo Type 4 was designed as a high performance and assault mass production MS, the battle performance was nearly like the Torgis, very suitable for frontline attacks. However, this idea went against the original intention, which means the cost will be dramatically increased. This variant was no longer cost effective, but rather just mass producing the Torgis itself. When Z's clock saw this design, he even said that why don't you guys mass produce Torgis instead in the first place? He got so angry about the idea went against the mass production intention, he resigned from OZ after seeing the Leo Type 4 design. In AC 186, the rebel at Marius plant use black painted Leo Type 4 as their main force. Before Dekim Barton decided to mass produce the Serpents, another MS plan was created for Dekim's Operation Meteor. This MS will be operated through MD system, it's called Capricorn. The Capricorn was developed to counter against Tenlong Gundam's Zero system. This MS was developed based on Leo, but the MS itself was more like a combination rather than upgrade. As a new MS, it featured no new parts or technologies. The head was from Viet and Mercurius. The torso was from Torgis. The limbs were from Serpent. Even the only weapon was borrowed from Epion and Torgis Freeze design. The Capricorn was originally planned to be produced in a large number, but the plan was cancelled as Deccan Barton received the parts and plans for the Serpents. But one of them was created for testing purpose. A direct upgrade from the Leo combined with the data of Gundam Heavy Arms, the Serpent, was created. As Leo was slowly fading out from the battlefield, UESA was wanted to develop a new generation MS that can operate on Earth and in space without switching equipment, as well as having the same firepower and defense like the Gundams. For the armor material, the Serpent was built with Neo Titanium instead. This material is half as light and twice as strong as conventional titanium alloys. For the cockpit, same design just like the Leo except it was equipped with extra enhanced targeting and lock-on system. For the weapons, it was completely based on the Gundam Heavy Arms, except the army knife was removed, which means the serpent have no melee ability. On the shoulders, it got egg tube missile launchers, a double Gatling gun as handheld weapon. This weapon was developed from Gundam Heavy Arms Custom. The serpent can also choose optional weapons like Bazooka, beam cannon from Virgo or Torgis Freeze Mega Beam Cannon. The serpent was developing in L3 Conley by UESA. As OZ started Operation Daybreak, UESA was defeated and collapsed. Very soon, Barton Foundation took 
of the Serpent's development plan and secretly continued the development. In AC-196, 500 Serpents were completed and served as Marimea Army's main force. Before they land on Earth, some of the Serpents were destroyed by Togis III. One Serpent was used by Troll Button when he was a spy. He fought against Dio Maxwell in a Leo and let him go. The rest of the Serpents were fought against the Gundams, Togis III and Taurus. Because the pilots don't want to kill anyone and there were a large number of Serpents, the Gundams had a tough time to fight against it. After Deccan was killed, all the Serpents were abandoned and later in the story, the Wiener family melted all the Neo-Titanium on the Serpents and used them to reinforce colony walls. Thanks for watching this video, what do you think of the Leo's history? Tell me more in the comment section. The Leo is a mass production MS but if it's used by the right pilot, it's still very powerful. Oh, don't forget to comment about which MS you want to see in the future. Your request will be answered as an episode. Did you like this video? Subscribe to me and hit the bell next to it to see more. Donation link is in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.